There is some solid evidence suggesting that more and more programmers are turning to AI coding assistance instead of using the old proven ways, which is asking questions on Stack Overflow to solve programming issues. And there is no surprise there. Texts generated by language models have come a long way so far, from being barely comprehensible, incorrect, and sometimes even hilarious, to actually passing the famous Turing test when used in chatbots. And code is just another form of text, after all, isn't it? So the big question at this point is, Will the code-based beings, such as AI tools, be able to replace their creators, which is programmers? And if so, how not to let it happen too soon? Welcome to TechNotes, podcast by Invedo, where we take journeys through the business galaxies. Today, I'll be traveling with Piotr Zieliński, security lead and full-stack developer at Invedo. Hi, Piotr. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. I know that you don't live close to the office, so <laughs> you had to take a journey. And uh, to, to really be here. Um, but I was really looking forward to our conversation today uh, because, if I may say so, you are kind of like a chief AI enthusiast at the company. It's, it's not a real uh, position, it's not an official title, but you often share your experiences with the AI and how you use the tools and you share the pieces of code that you generate, uh, especially when it comes to chat GPT and uh, Copilot, GitHub Copilot. Uh, so maybe let's start from like a general overview. Uh, what are your main intakes? What are your main opinions so far? Well, so far I have to admit that uh, ChatGPT, for me at least, is better tool because I'm a chatty person. Okay. And I would like uh, I like to ask um, multiple questions. So uh, ChatGPT is something that you can speak with and to get more insights than the original answer. And this mm. is why I like the ChatGPT better over... GitHub Copilot. Yes, GitHub Copilot. Yes, actually, that is my question about the quality of the code, because uh, on the market, there's a lot of discussion about intellectual property, because that's a big topic, like what will, because money comes with it, right? So whether the algorithm will train on somebody else's IP property or not, uh, what will happen with the IP of the code that is generated? So uh, does it really belong to the programmer or the, or the AI tool and so on and so forth? There's a lot of discussion happening there, but I haven't seen a lot of discussion happening about the quality. Um, so what's your intake on that? Is the code generated, generated really good um, or not? Um, it depends. Okay. <laughs> Some, <laughs> uh, sometimes the, the answer which ChatGPT is giving to us is amazingly good. Um, I'm astonished about the quality of the answer, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's so bad that you would throw this in, in trash and forget about this. Oh. So it really depends on the on what you're asking for and okay, how you yeah. phrase the, the questions, because the, uh, you have to be very specific what you are asking for. You have to put as much context uh, mm. as you can to receive a response which is yeah. uh, which is close to what you are expecting and what you are asking for. I see. And in your experience, are there any problems or issues that are more complicated for the AI to generate? Have you noticed like, okay, asking about, I don't know, this uh, kind of functions, it's easier. And then they for example, the, the tools do not comprehend that you want to do some different features. Any kind of dependency there? I don't think that there is a, some rule that mm -hmm. can uh, tell you when you will receive a good answer and when you will not receive that answer. Probably, I would say that if something is very uh, unique, 
okay. then the answer can be not so good because not all of the programmers or not uh, many programmers are using that feature or that approach. Mm -hmm. And that's why then the chat GPT didn't have uh, enough knowledge, enough yes. data okay. to uh, be able to learn about this uh, feature. Yeah, because after all, we are talking about generating code or generating text because code is just a different form of text from something that was already there on the internet that was yeah. already you know, implemented into the algorithm it was taught based on something right so uh, so i guess it, it could be kind of uh, yeah it could kind of be obvious that um, creative solutions innovative solutions might be an issue yeah i, I would say so and i think that the more general questions are answered uh, better than mm -hmm. uh, specific ones. Okay. If you are s asking for uh, some very specific uh, item, um, for example, I'm yeah. uh, I'm a gamer. I play a lot, and when I'm asking some questions about games, mm -hmm. the answer is not so good. Um, sometimes even that mm, it's not giving me the answer to my question but mm -hmm. it's throws out some generic information about the game all right are you looking for solutions using chat yes GPT? yes <laughs> I, 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 i'm using uh, chat gpt to receive a uh, ready to use solutions for games for example that's quite interesting yeah. i i'm going uh, through Baldur's gate 3 right now the second time i've never played any role-playing game two times I am right now and uh, I recently I was looking for something in a forum as well and there were people sharing actual information that you know there was an article saying you can do this this way but then somebody found out it's an AI generated article <laughs> just got like just saying yeah. rubbish and not saying the real answers just like making up facts and and things that were not actually included in the game so I think uh, with the solutions to games that are not known to ChatGPT, yeah, exactly. it may be quite difficult because it's just based on the information that, that you received. Yeah, so this, this, this is the same uh, if you are asking about the technology which mm. is not yet known to, yeah. to ChatGPT. Like, for example, .NET 8 probably will be released in one month or so. Yeah. So probably if you would ask something about... .NET 8 release candidate, uh, you will not receive any answer. Okay. Oh, probably, most probably, it's even that you will receive an answer, but it's completely rubbish and completely... Um, made up. Yes, made up, exactly. Okay, that's, that's a big problem, I think. Uh, because you already mentioned uh, the, the quality of the code may be vary, right? Uh, yes. It can, be, uh, it can be really good, it can be very bad, but it I think it can also be made up, right? So the, the code yes. that doesn't work may it's, be produced. Uh, with ChatGPT4, it's not so often, but with ChatGPT3.5, it was very often that you received, uh, for example, it was using a method that does not exist or something like that. It's not, it wasn't very useful. Hmm. With ChatGPT4, it's better, but it's not, not ideal. Yeah, you touched the topic that I wanted to ask about next, uh, the quality of the code generated by different versions of, of ChatGPT, because you've already worked with ChatGPT uh, three and a half and, and then four. Do you see a difference there? Yes, the difference is very big. Um, the quality of answers from ChatGPT4, it's better, mm -hmm. uh, it's more sophisticated, uh, it's more related to the context which you uh, passed to mm -hmm. ChatGPT uh, and the answers are more precise. Okay. Um, I mean, that's what I would expect from a uh, next yes. version of the, of the tool, but sometimes the next version may, uh, I mean, the upgrades are not so obvious, right? Because in very complex um, methodologies, in very complex algorithms, I, I cannot imagine how easy it is to break something and just uh, instead of improving uh, to, to, to receive a, a worse tool. Um, but you see the significant change in, in quality. Yes, um, I'm waiting to see ChatGPT5, what uh, it will offer, because the change may be even more significant. 
That's quite cool. That's something to look forward. Yeah. But we already covered quality of the code. And you also mentioned something that I think we need to focus on next, which is in order to get a good quality of the generated code, you need to give a lot of context, which means sometimes maybe jeopardizing the intellectual property because code is supposed to be well, if it's not an open source, right, it may belong to the company, the company wants mm -hmm. to protect their secrets, maybe they're working, the company is working on something very innovative, and they're not keen on sharing this, right? And we have this developer, this programmer who wants to generate a piece of code, and then needs to share context and needs to share pieces of this code. So you as a security lead, you probably know this topic very well. And so my question is how to make sure that using so such tools to generate code doesn't jeopardize the uh, the security or the ip and yeah definitely you should not copy paste your code <laughs> okay. this is the number one not to do mm. uh, if you need really to copy paste something first copy to notepad obfuscate the code change the naming of the properties for example mm. so it would not indicate any business context of your project Mm -hmm. And then you can ask that question, that technical question you would like mm -hmm. to ask uh, ChatGPT. And I think in that case, it's a bit more secure okay. that uh, copy pasting the original code. To be honest, I never copy pasting any code. I'm rather asking uh, general questions, general uh, approach or I'm phrasing my expectation how this code should mm -hmm. uh, work rather than copy pasting something which I got from from the system that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I see. With like not copy pasting and giving uh, the, the context instead, I think it's more natural when you use the chat GPT tool. Uh, but with GitHub Copilot, I think this tool would need to see a piece of code to yes. kind of fill in the gaps, uh, right? Yes, it's a bit but I, I discontinued using uh, Copilot. To be honest, I'm, as I said on the beginning, I'm a rather a chatty person who like to ask many questions. And that's why I, I didn't get this amount of responsiveness from uh, Copilot. That's mm -hmm. why I... Uh, do not use this uh, tool anymore. I'm focusing rather on um, ChatGPT. And uh, it's a tool that you can use not only for programming, but I mm. often use to, for example, uh, my son a um, few days ago had some um, homework that yeah. would involve uh, Morse code. So I asked really? ChatGPT how you would specify uh, this sentence in Morse code, and I receive a very good answer. Uh, so, for example, if my son um, did his homework, I was able to cross-check his homework, his answers with ChatGPT. Oh, that's cool. Yes. That's really interesting. I mean, you saved a lot of time because otherwise you would probably yes, exactly. need to take the text Morse code textbook and then just start checking everything by hand. Uh, that's quite interesting. I mean, I also use ChatGPT at work to help me with emails, to help me a little bit with uh, even preparing for podcasts and, and writing the, uh, you know, the content. Uh, so it is a tool that helps generate text. Yes. Uh, and it seems quite natural right now, just like using it, asking questions. Uh, but in fact, it's a really complex tool, right? Uh, and uh, for me, the, the fact that programmers are using and there is evidence that are using even more often uh, that are starting to use this more often and more often uh, to generate code is like a next natural step in the evolution because you as programmers have always been on a strive to kind of like make your work easier, right? Uh, innovations with uh, like the programming languages, complex libraries, uh, new frameworks and so on and so forth. So that using the, the, the AI tool to kind of like make your work faster, easier is sounds like a natural next step. But my question is, do you also see it just as a tool to help you work? Or do you see it as something that will totally change the, uh, the market, totally change the industry? Yeah, I, I think it will change uh, the market eventually. I'm mm. waiting to see what ChatGPT5 will uh, allow us to do because uh, 
With ChatGPT 4, you can still be a programmer. You can still okay, yeah. rely on your expertise, on mm -hmm. your knowledge. Uh, you can implement uh, applications, but I'm not so sure if this knowledge and expertise will be still needed with ChatGPT 5, for example, or 6 or 7. I hope that it will still be something which is a uh, search on the market. So we will still have our jobs. <laughs> um, but so far, mm. it's a tool. Okay, yeah, so far is it all. That's, uh, that's what I wanted to ask you about as well, uh, because, uh, well, I'm not a programmer myself. Uh, I did one programming uh, course, and of course, we started from programming Hello World, uh, obviously, who doesn't? And, uh, but I, I saw this as a thing that I don't really, I'm not really good at, and, and just better to leave it to the, to the experts. But now with this tool, is it possible for someone who is not really a programmer to right now with ChatGPT4, because we can only imagine what ChatGPT5 will be. So with ChatGPT4, is it really possible for someone who's not a programmer to create a ready working application? Or it's still like somebody needs to be an expert to actually check for the mistakes and check whatever is made up. And where are we on this scale right now? I will answer the same question as before. It depends. It okay. depends what you expect. Mm. If you expect some small application which will um, resolve, help you to improve one task, mm. probably it will be okay. All right. But if you are uh, to implement a complex, complex solution mm. Uh, that will uh, execute more than one business case. And if you would like to this tool to be uh, extendable, mm -hmm. if you would like to this tool to be um, working properly, efficient, uh, to be implemented according to some architectural, um, best practices yes best practices then not yet okay okay well unfortunately not for me <laughs> fortunately for for the programmers right uh, yeah so the, it depends also it depends how you are specifying the pro program mm. programming is not only writing code it's only a, it's also something that you have to understand business you have to Propose solutions. Uh, ask questions mm. uh, to the client how it should work, yeah. how you would like to be implemented. Do you want to be, I don't know, for example, uh, bulletproof or mm -hmm. something like that? Then you have to take in consideration that it will take more time, yeah. but you will have better solution. Programmer is not only writing code. It, it's, uh, it's rather... Um, translating expectations to, to the code. And uh, if you would like to have a big solution, then with current um, mm, restrictions, mm -hmm. you will not be able to throw, I don't know, 10,000, uh, maybe 10,000 is possible, but 50,000 of uh, words mm -hmm. describing how this application should be working that chat gpt will not generate it to you. yeah yeah you mentioned something really important that programming is uh, about translating needs to the code right and the translating business needs to the code and well code that's exactly what you tell it to do right it's like it will not be yes. doing anything else than you just code it to uh, tell it tell it to do um so i guess there is whole this this whole industry that will still remain but maybe move a little bit more towards being consulting towards finding solutions than just generate just writing code because that can be done uh in some ways automatically uh, I found actually a, a very uh, nice uh, quote by Sam Altman, who did uh, a small lecture on, at the University of Warsaw, summer 2023 this year. Um, and he said something along the lines that uh, they're hoping um, in, in OpenAI, because he's the CEO of OpenAI, they're hoping that their tool 
will help to program maybe three, maybe five times faster, maybe even more, right? But at the same time, he he kind of predicts that on the market, there will be need for this three times more code or five times more code. So probably this will not take away jobs from, from programmers, but will just shift a little bit the focus. Yeah, probably. As the um, industrialization of... Mm-hmm. Um, it was one nineties, um, eight, nineties, and eighties, probably when the industrialization mm-hmm. was rising, and um, it shifted jobs. You didn't have to anymore um, do a manual job. Machine was able to do that. Yeah. So th- this is the same. Of course, up to the point. Yes, after the point. We'll see what yes. Chat GPT five does. <laughs> or or six or eight. Um yeah, I think um we are not able to be sure what the future will uh will show us. Hmm. So so we started talking a little bit about the future that the, those AI tools will probably be more and more advanced. Uh, anything that concerns you about AI today or the near future when we are like talking about those tools getting more and more advanced? To be honest, everything concerns me. Everything concerns me because uh, every bit, every new invention, innovation in AI uh it's uh, replacing humans mm. for example i'm uh i'm i cannot imagine that i would not be working working is something that mm. i have to do not just only to um for the money but also because i like it okay i like my job i like my uh position i like what i do so if I can be replaced and if anyone else can be replaced who like his job or her job, uh, this concerns me. All right. Uh, but we just discussed that it's not yet time to be yes. worried about being replaced. Uh, and there might be other opportunities. So maybe it's not about being replaced, but being you know, yes. moved to a different position. Pro- probably... Maybe you are right, but I'm I'm expecting that we, we all of us mm. would be able to be replaced in 15 years, 20 years. All right. Huh. So, <laughs> yes. So first in the jobs that requires thinking more than manual um, manipulations. But um, there are companies that are working on robots that can replace human. Um, so what else? What then? What, 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 then? what, what will we be doing? Yeah. How, how should I, as a parent... Advise your kids? Yes, advise your, my kids how, what they should learn, yeah. how they should, what they should do to be uh, someone which is... With a secure future or like irreplaceable at the place yeah, of exactly. work. Yeah, that's that's actually quite interesting because uh, we used to, like the way we started automating things, we started from the manual tasks, right? You mentioned the machines doing things uh, instead of humans. And there is still a big chunk of industry trying to build the robots, the like dog robots, for example, do walking and doing stuff like... Have you seen this video of um, the robots dancing and opening yeah. doors? Yeah, it's kind of creepy right now, but it's probably the future that uh, we can expect. Uh, so there is this part of manual tasks being done by the by the robots. Uh, and for a long time, we thought that creative tasks are safe because it requires thinking, exactly. it requires analytical thinking and being creative. And now we're like, okay, but the, the AI tools can do this as well. They can generate text they can generate music they can generate uh pictures so yeah that's a good question what's what's left yeah so i i don't think we can answer this question today um but it's uh, it's very interesting to to see where it, where it goes so that's something that concerns you when it comes to, to ai yes this one and the future which is ahead of us are you thinking about rogue ai is taking over <laughs> um yes and no Okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be rock. It it can be 
friendly to us. Mm -hmm. But who you are or where you are, if uh, AI that is 10 times more uh, intelligent than you. Mm. Not only 10, probably 100. And, yeah, yeah depending something on... like that. So the, who are you if you are just a uh, ant? Like mm. ants are now, uh, for us, we will be ants for uh, artificial AI. intelligence. Wow. We are expendable to them. <laughs> we will be expendable to them, even if they will be friendly. Well, I hope not. It got a little bit dark right now and, and a lot of science fiction. And so let me shift the focus into, uh, into the things that you would like to see AI tools doing, because uh, surely there are things that think they can help with and make our lives easier instead of like just threatening our jobs only. <laughs> so I would like to see the, um, maybe on one hand, I would like to see, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, I would not like to see okay. the general purpose AI. So it would not okay. be focusing on text, but it will, for example, allow us to make breakthroughs in pharmacology, in, um, in cancers, in uh, fighting with diseases. Mm -hmm. So this is we, what I would like to see on one hand. And on, on the other hand, uh, if it will be capable of resolving our problems with our health, mm. it can also be uh, on the other uh, side and it may cause our health issues. Yeah, actually, uh, there was this series on Netflix a couple of months ago. Uh, I think it was called Killer Robots, something like that. It, the, the, the name was kind of ominous. Uh, but the series was focused on new technologies and also thinking about the nearest future. And there were some researchers, uh, researchers saying that they actually use some kind of generative model to uh, generate formulas. Uh, chemical formulas mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted to generate formulas for uh, for medicine of course I, I don't quite remember exactly what the medicine was for uh, but they had an idea can we actually try and see if we are able to use the same model to generate toxins and they changed one parameter and they created yeah. like hundreds of different toxins that they like some of them, they didn't even, uh, they, were, they were not previously known. So yeah, it is, it is a threat, actually. And this is the good, very good example, because mm. uh, I'm not sure which version of ChatGPT, uh, one of the first ones, was able to produce uh, toxic gas. Oh, even like the if, formula for the toxic yes, gas. Yes, and the authors of that solution, of that uh, ChatGPT, were not aware that this... AI will be able to uh, generate that formula. Yeah, that's. I think it's uh, talking about security from a different point of view, like what kind of security measures, caps, and some kind of pre-defined uh, topics we should ban from from the AI tools. But yeah, people are very creative. But I I'm see you're already that you skeptical. I'm afraid you unable to ban. I'm not sure if you're aware that we do not know how the AI works. Oh, is that so? <laughs> yes. I've heard like we people no, write the no, algorithm and they understand how it works. We don't know how this works. In very small experiments, you when you have two, three neurons, artificial mm -hmm. neurons, maybe we know how this works. But when there are millions of them, thousands of them, we are unable to tell how it works. Okay, so, so it's impossible to say how the thinking process goes. So you you are unable to specify the forbidden phrases, forbidden mm. topics, because until you ask the questions, you are not sure what the AI neural networks knows and if it's able to answer that question or, or not. That's so, fascinating. Yes, and this is fascinating and, and scary. it's also scary exactly at, the same, at the same time. I think I actually uh, saw this kind of motive that we don't understand how the things we create, uh, the very advanced technologies that we create work. Uh, it was a small um, science fiction movie. I think it was called Young. 
Uh, it was about like new future. It wasn't specified when exactly. Of course, it was a sci-fi movie uh, about a family having a robot that kind of helped them and was part of the family. And one day it broke. And then the, the father of the family took on a journey to kind of try to fix this robot because it was very important to the family. Uh, and there was a point in which he came to some kind of uh, scientific um, place, like scientific research place. And main scientist there, she said that they don't actually know how those robots work. And for me, it was kind of curious, like that's a very strange trope in the in the movie, because how can you not understand you created that? Uh, and you're saying that we already don't know how yes. the generative models work. Yeah, so in, in general, um, not a single person can tell you how, for example, the processor exactly works, mm. CPU. But if you ask a group of scientists that are working on that processor, that, that this group will be able to answer your question. They mm -hmm. collectively will know how this works. But no one, not a single or a group of scientists, AI scientists will allow, will tell you how this works. That's very fascinating and scary yes <laughs> that's very interesting uh, but maybe let's go back to like more mundane more <laughs> down to the earth topics uh when we are talking about just regular programmers and not those ai specialists that have to collectively just gather to to, to know how how the model works but just a regular programmer and how would you kind of recommend what would you say to those regular programmers, normal people uh, trying to stay at their jobs and using AI at the same time. Um, would you give them some kind of recommendations on how to use the AI to just stay on top, to make their work faster, easier? Any advice for, for the beginners? Hmm. Interesting question. I cannot tell the um, ready-to-use answers hmm. because it depends how you'd like to use that tool. Okay. Uh, definitely you have to take into consideration that uh, you have to protect your company. Mm -hmm. So the problems with uh, rights to the code or rights to the text that you are putting into the uh, chat GPT um, text window, context, mm. however you would like to call it. What else? Definitely use that solution, because mm. if you would not use that solution, then you will not, you will be expendable. You can, uh, yes, definitely, you, you have to use it. You have to learn, you have to know how to phrase questions mm. so they could be answered according to your expectations. Because if you do not learn that, then you will be um, like in dark room, mm. trying to find a solution that it's right behind your face, be be before your face, but you are not able to find it. I see. So, so we have to improvise, adapt, and overcome. Yes, <laughs> like exactly. That. And I think that in in very near future, uh, one of the traits that is uh, mm. required from a new employee will be to know those tools and know how to use them in a daily work. Yeah, and how to prompt the, the, yes, exact, exactly. the, the right questions. Yeah, it used to be uh, well seen on the resume to have like uh, you know Microsoft Office uh, yes. knowledge of Microsoft Office, which for us already it's ridiculous. Yeah. But uh, but uh, people back then, I don't know, uh, in the early two thousands, it was still something that you should probably put on your resume. Two thousand tens also. Yeah. Right. And now uh, the new skill that is needed is prompting. Yes. Prompting. Uh, yeah, that's that's really interesting. Uh, yeah, I think 
it's time for us to kind of conclude the, the conversation, even though this topic is huge and we can keep going. Uh, so I have one last question, uh, which is connected to, um, to the logo of Inveto and our space theme. Uh, and of course, uh, science fiction vibes. So do you have a favorite series? I'm asking everyone about recommendations, mm. maybe series, maybe movie, maybe something, and maybe books. Uh, yes, I have a couple of them. One of them is Matrix. Oh, so awesome. you know why Classic. I'm afraid of machines oh, now. Right. It makes sense now. Yes. What else? Star Trek. Okay. Yep. Um, Star Trek team. From the first series up to the uh, newest ones, maybe with some exceptions. <laughs> uh, I have my favorite ones. Um, okay. And uh, recently I was, uh, I think for the third time, I was watching the Expanse series. Yes, oh, I love it. Be yes, I love it because <laughs> it shows the physics behind the whole universe. It's not some, it's not relying on something which is not existing, like, mm -hmm. for example, shields. In every sci-fi mu movie about spaceships, there are shields. And uh, he yeah, yeah. here are there, there are no shields. There are no engines capable of traveling faster than light. Everything... They try to keep it real. Uh, yes, it's science-based, maybe with some exceptions that uh, some of those uh, uh, basic concepts are not so real like mm. this super efficient engine oh. yeah but it 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 has to have some concept uh, yeah. it has to rely on something to make it more entertain entertaining yeah, yes, yes of entertaining course. exactly yeah, yeah. well from the social point of view i think the most interesting concept is the rivalry between the the belt the mars and earth yeah. because i think it's like so obvious if humanity ever expands we usually don't make good friends with people that are other from us even yes. on earth so what happens if humanity expands to different different planets so yeah it, it's a good series i recommend it as well but uh, last question how many uh, matrix movies they are uh, are you the hardcore fan or do you <laughs> recognize are, the last uh, one <laughs> three that are classic i would say and the fourth one which <laughs> So you admit it exists, but you are not a big fan. Well, it's not bad. I would say it's not bad, but it it's not the same not as the, the, same. the general uh, classic trilogy. Mm, that's true. That's true. But what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the recommendations. Thank you very much for your fascinating, uh, fascinating conversation today. And I hope we'll do this again. Sure. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.